name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, as many of you know, both within the uh, season of uh, Lent, which is the one that we are observing now, and in the uh, season of Advent uh, before Christmas, there is one uh, Sunday that is denominated Refreshment Sunday, and the somewhat somber uh, purple liturgical color is replaced with a rose or pink color, which I think in our case, uh, maybe because of our proximity <coughs> to the ocean, kind of turns to color of salmon. <laughs> Uh, but uh, in any event, um, th thereby is indicated that there are times uh, in the uh, somber seasons, in the seasons of um, difficulty, in the seasons of, um, of reflection, wherein uh, the spiritual atmosphere lightens up uh, and when we are as indicated a few minutes ago, uh, we um, are capable of partaking of refreshment, probably uh, in this case other than of a merely physical uh, nature. The Gospel of Philip, um, which was read for us, the passage from the Gospel of Philip, uh, uh, brings to our attention an, an interesting um, uh, circumstance which is probably not so often um, uh, apparent uh, and emphasized in the various scriptures but certainly is there, namely that we live in a uh, reality that is a mixture. Uh, it is a mixture of light and dark. It is a mixture of positive and negative. It is a mixture of uh, good and evil. Uh, of masculine and feminine, of up and down. And uh, as the result of that, it is really um, um, very difficult uh, to uh, sort out one polarity from the other. We see a particular situation, we see some particular people or um, uh, doctrines or uh, political uh, philosophies of one kind or the other, and we say, oh, this one, this one is going to be good. This one is going to be truly helpful. And then we find out uh, uh, that uh, there are some shadows uh, that appear there also, and that uh, we cannot really legitimately call anything in this world, and unfortunately even anybody in this world, as uh, Jesus tells in the canonical gospel, call no man good. Well, how, how can that be? Wouldn't you say that the, uh, the purpose of uh, the uh, Redeemer is to help to make people good, to help them become good? And when that may have occurred, then we can't call them good? You know, what kind of a paradox are we dealing with here? And obviously what he indicates in a truly Gnostic manner is that um, there may be a predominance of one quality over the other, but that its opposite still always lurks under the surface. And this is the kind of um, um, interaction of the uh, binaries of the opposites that has been recognized by various people throughout the ages including in more recent uh, times by depth psychology, such as that of C.G. Jung, uh, and uh, uh, has been recognized as uh, being perhaps a sort of uh, uh, alchemical process, wherein the opposites are interacting with each other, often in a hostile manner, and eventually um, uh, hoping to accomplish a certain um, reconciliation and perhaps ultimate union. But meanwhile there is this seething, uh, uh, troublesome, turbulent, uh, bubbling, exploding, shaking, as we have experienced a little while ago, uh, a process taking place, which is to say the least uh, somewhat disconcerting. 
Mm. And uh, it is from this uh, process um, that we require refreshment. We need to be refreshed. Uh, how are we being refreshed? The uh, Gospel of Philip tells very well that those who manage to rise in consciousness above uh, that battlefield, that turmoil, they are indissoluble and eternal. And they are not affected by it yet, at least at that time. So we need to seek opportunities for such refreshment. Obviously, we can't live on the um, spiritual mountaintop all the time. You may recall from uh, the various scriptures, both canonical and uh, Gnostic, that uh, Christ and his apostles would go up on the mountaintop, Mount Tabor or somewhere, and there the transfiguration takes place in various other great events. But even there, um, they don't remain there forever. They, they have to come back. And I always feel sorry for the apostles when we read the Transfiguration Gospel that here there was great big light and Moses appeared and Elijah appeared and then St. Peter was in, in total joy and ecstasy. He said, come on, Lord, you know, let's stay here and we will build you three little houses, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elias and we'll just stay up here. And uh, Jesus says to them, uh, no, uh, that is not what is going to happen. <laughs> and uh, very soon when they look, they only see Jesus and the others are all gone and the light is all gone. Um, and that is, of course, sad uh, because as we all have discovered in the 1960s, we have a great uh, desire for the permanent high. <laughs> uh, and that is a legitimate desire. And it, I think it's really a desire that comes from a far memory of uh, conditions when we were still close to our celestial parents, when we were still in our original spiritual home, when uh, things were uh, ecstatic and transfigured all the time. But at this particular uh, time, this particular uh, moment in our history, that is not the case yet. However, we can make efforts to um, receive spiritual refreshment while we are in this world and while we observe and to some extent probably inevitably participate in that turmoil that goes on, where in the, uh, the perpetual Armageddon, where the armies of the light and the dark are, are fighting in, in the valley, but um, there can be times, there can be moment, moments when we rise out of that, when we are removed from that, and when we experience at least for a period of time uh, our timeless, our uh, indestructible uh, uh, nature, uh, where we begin to realize that we are not in the inmost center of our being, of that turmoil. That is something that goes on and that pertains to our lower nature and pertains to the external creation. There is something deeply within us which has to be called upon, which has to be cultivated, which has to be, um, well, it has to be nourished, shall we say, in various ways. Nourished by the sacraments, nourished by um, good thoughts, nourished by prayer, uh, uh, and that is indissoluble and eternal. And that is without conflict. That is timeless and perfect and deathless uh, and without any affliction because that is what it has always been but, and uh, that is what it always will be. Uh, but at the present time, it, it is only it appertains to us from time to time to be able to uh, lift up our uh, sight and raise it to the everlasting hills, as the biblical phrase has it, from whence cometh our help. And thereby then we are refreshed. 
and with that refreshment we can descend from the mountain and we will not be uh, um, pulled in, we will not be, um, uh, our consciousness will not be lessened and obliterated by being drawn into the turmoil, into the conflict, into the, uh, well I suppose one might say in an inelegant manner, into the mess <laughs> which is about us and around us. And that refreshment then will last us. Uh, the memories of that consciousness are things that we can call upon. Uh, and we know that there is such a consciousness. We know that there is such a, a spiritual place. And that we have the ability to go there and to participate in it and to thereby be uh, refreshed. And this, of course, ultim ultimately is also our great hope that even as from time to time we touch that eternal realm and participate in its energy and in its glory, uh, in, in, in its uh, uh, supportive kindness and love, so uh, the time out of time and out of place will come when we will be able to abide there forever, when the turmoil will have ceased, when uh, the war is over, when uh, um, the gnosis of God covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. But until then we need to be refreshed and we need to remember and we need to go on uh, with the strength, with the, uh, the insight, uh, with the the courage that we uh, accumulate, that we take into ourselves in these moments of refresh refreshment and these experiences will allow us to go on and to come to the glorious, marvelous and greatly desired, although still only faintly remembered, but still greatly desired, denouement culmination of uh, this long and strange process in which we are involved. And so may the mystery of that which hangs fixed heaven and earth descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen.